I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House. This week we're inside some truly dreamy homes, including this West Village Stunner that maximizes design in a small space. And we explore the last freestanding home in New York's Soho neighborhood. You're gonna love how this design duo celebrated nature and light in their client's Sherman Oaks home. But before all that, Danielle Bernstein, the founder of the popular fashion blog We Wore What, shows us her beautiful downtown live work loft. I was really excited to finally have a space that I could make my own and really share my design aesthetic with the world. Welcome to Open House, everyone. This week, we are inside some amazing homes from Greenwich Village to Sherman Oaks to Soho, which is where we are getting started. Danielle Bernstein is the fashion blogger turned business mogul behind the influential and hugely popular We Wore What brand. Now she opens the door to her live work loft that she designed. And wait until you see that closet. I mean, pff, seriously, you gotta see this for yourself. Hi, Open House. I'm Danielle Bernstein of We Were What. Welcome to my Soho loft. I was really excited to finally have a space that I could make my own and really share my design aesthetic with the world. This inspiration was a very lived in, wabi-sabi, neutral vibe. You'll see a lot of playing with organic textures and shapes and really an appreciation for imperfection. So as soon as you walk into the space, you are greeted by this gorgeous bookshelf. It has collected vintage pieces from all over the world. And then at the end of the hallway, you have this really dramatic shutter that lets light in throughout the day and just creates this really dramatic effect. And then further down the hallway, we have this massive mirror that was custom made in Brooklyn as my selfie and outfit of the day mirror. I really wanted something that was super wide and really tall, and it has this beautiful reclaimed wood on it, and this is where I take all of my outfit photos. When designing the bedroom, we wanted to create a really warm, relaxing, and comfortable environment. I spent a lot of time upstate throughout the pandemic at this place called The Duchess, where they used a lot of this dark green. So I was really inspired by that and then wanted to mix it in with the aesthetic of the rest of the apartment. We custom made the bed and slip cover, and then it sits in between these two Burlwood nightstands designed by Sawhouse. We also sourced a 1970s Spanish wicker mirror and an early 20th century Chinese wooden bench. And the ceiling is part of the original loft structure, so we wanted to keep that because it's one of the coolest aspects of this place. And then we use this Noguchi lantern to just fill the space with a lot of light. So now we are in the main part of the loft, which is the living room, dining room, and kitchen combined. I do a ton of entertaining, so this room is perfect with the open format. So we custom made this sofa with Marissa from Corvino Designs, and I wanted it to feel like it was swiveling around and opening up to the rest of the room, but it has these really sharp angles, completely custom made with this really amazing piece of wood on the back to serve as a shelf, but also where you could eat and watch TV. Now we're in the dining area, which sits really open to the kitchen. It's not only where I entertain, but where my team works. So we wanted to create a really great sitting environment with a mixture of a banquette and then these beautiful genre chairs. And then filled the ceiling with these beautiful big pendants custom made in Canada by an artist named Kit King. I love this area so much. I love hosting dinner parties and my team loves working here all day and just creating a really cool flow. So now we are in the kitchen where, I have to admit, my boyfriend does most of the cooking. It has these beautiful built-in cabinets with this brass hardware and this dark gray marble backsplash. So we also sourced these gorgeous, vintage, brutalist Sergio Rodriguez-inspired bar stools that really allow for people to sit and hang out while we're cooking. Okay guys, so now you've seen most of my apartment, but there's still one more space that's pretty special, so let's go. Welcome to my dream closet. Well, actually it was the primary bedroom, but we converted it into my absolute dream closet, which is highly functional, but also beautifully designed. 
So it was really important for me because we work from home to have a space that could serve as a showroom, a place to meet, try on all my new arrivals and create outfits with. So you'll see that it's super organized. There is a place for everything. And this is my massive shoe wall. It's really the first time that I have been able to see all the shoes that I've collected over the years. And in this corner of the closet, we have my sunglass and accessories wall, which really helps make styling my outfit super easy and also shows all of the new sunglasses for my brand. I really feel like it's a space that not only makes my job super easy, but also allows me to be really creative. All right, guys, thanks for coming to my little oasis in the heart of Soho. I hope you love it as much as I do and keep following my brand, We Wore What, on Instagram for more. Talk about a dream closet. Oh my gosh, am I right? Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we are in Sherman Oaks, California at the latest project of this design duo. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. And now we're in Sherman Oaks, California with the design duo behind Minarch. Their latest project, dubbed the Phoenix House, emphasizes sustainability and flow with a focus on bringing the outside in. The result is a series of serene and balanced living spaces that celebrate the natural world every step of the way. Hello, I'm Trigvi. And I'm Erla. We have the architectural firm Minark. Welcome to the Phoenix House. We come from Iceland, but we had our architecture office since 1999 in Santa Monica. I think Minark is an infusion of Iceland and California living. We like our design, simple and clean, and of course, very functional. And you're gonna see the Minark touches throughout the house. Enjoy. So the first thing you notice is the exterior. We like to keep the natural aspect of the materials. You can see exposed steel beams, you see natural wood siding. One of the requirements that the client had was to have the house flexible for entertainment. As you can see, the covered space where you normally park your car has full lighting system, speakers. It's not just where you park your car. You enter to the water feature, you get the sound, the smell of the herbs. It's actually a really nice space to be. When we open up the front door, you'll immediately see through the house. And you can start seeing the backyard and the nice back door that can opens up to the rear yard. Also, the staircase and the metal stairs that lead you to the second story. My favorite thing is actually the piece underneath the staircase. The piece represents a small blue wave on a sparkling black sand beach, offering new beginnings while remembering the beautiful past. The kitchen is a focal point for the house. It has a direct access to the rear yard and also to the front yard that you just came from. So to emphasize on the perspective of the galley kitchen, we have designed the handles to be horizontal and countertops have an infinity edge to it. And when you combine all these elements together, it becomes a one seamless flow. When you enter the room, it becomes very calming. There is big doors on both sides of the bedroom. One door leads down to the private backyard, looking down into the pool area. On the other side, we've created these wood shaders. And if you look through them, you can still see the sky, but you can keep the privacy and don't see down into the neighbor's yard. So the floor is definitely open outside, inside, inside out, with the open bathroom where there's a shower and a bathtub. And if you want to continue the calm energy, please come down to the rear yard. So one of the things when you notice when you're in the backyard, you see how the boxes of the building are kind of stacked unregularly to create the outdoor space to be covered. And also at the same time, you open up a space for the roof deck on the second story. 
And the backyard gives you many variations of entertaining. You have the swimming pool, covered dining. If you look from top down, you will see all the different moments we created and the whole lot and gain more experience throughout the house. Thank you for being with us on this tour. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bless, bless. Coming up in just a few, we are in Soho to tour this unique townhome. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House. Now we're at this impressive freestanding home in Soho, New York, the last of its kind in the neighborhood. This 20 foot wide home is truly unique, featuring four exposures and is flooded with natural light all across its over 3,400 square feet. Take a look. Hi, I'm Alyssa Brody, co-founder of DMT. Welcome to 514 Broom Street. This is Soho's only freestanding townhouse. Built in 1930, the home is a perfect mix of historical charm and modern convenience. Let's check it out. This home is 20 feet wide and has 3,400 square feet of living space, spread over three stories. Plus, and this is key, it features a very rare four exposures. So you are surrounded by iconic Soho views. As soon as you step in under the stained glass vestibule, you're greeted by this 50 foot long parlor floor. It includes living, dining, and a kitchen that is sure to impress any chef. Check out the original wood beam ceilings and floors that run throughout the entire home as does the exposed brick, which is a stylish and sexy New York City staple. Speaking of entertaining, imagine hosting your next dinner party right here with this original wood burning fireplace as your backdrop. Believe me, there's no better way to warm up the vibe. I also love all the shelving built into the brick. As someone who loves to cook, this is a dream kitchen. I always say that natural light is the best ingredient and this kitchen has plenty through the skylight. It's so spacious with handsome concrete countertops and surprising details like the stained glass cabinets and the antique mirror. This is a great place for a last look before your first bite. Let's go upstairs. The second floor features a guest bedroom and this den slash media room, my personal favorite room of the house. It's warm and cozy with just the right touch of drama. Cocktails, anyone? This wet bar is exactly where you'll mix them. This terrace is where you'll definitely be bringing the party. Enjoy all four seasons right here. Hello, Soho. How's this for a dramatic bedroom suite? It occupies the entire third floor. It's super spacious, but the unique vaulted ceilings make it feel even bigger. Through these glass doors, you have a cast iron balcony. There's also a Western exposure for gorgeous sunset lighting. And when it gets cold, turn up the heat with a gas burning fireplace. As for the bathroom, it's basically a spa with a deep soaking tub and a steam shower. And it's all clad in Venetian plaster. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at what is definitely one of the most unique homes downtown. I'll see you next time. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we are in Greenwich Village for a look at the big design in this small space. We'll be right back.
Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Greenwich Village with architect Alexander Gorlin. He shows us around a studio apartment that's a lesson in maximizing style in a smaller space. And having a terrace overlooking the beautiful neighborhood doesn't hurt either. Take a look. Hi, I'm Alex Gorlin, an architect based in New York City, and welcome to my home in Greenwich Village. What I first loved about the apartment was the amazing view of downtown Manhattan, then second, the great terrace that surrounded the apartment. Even though it was a total wreck, it was a hidden gem just waiting to be polished. This is Eileen Gray's E1027 house, and it was most of the inspiration for the design of this apartment, especially how she opened up the sleeping area to the living area. The dining area is defined by the great knoll table designed by Eero Saarinen. Surrounding the table are six chairs whose profile reflects the Saarinen table, very comfortable, and covered with a lush green fabric. There's really one long wall in this apartment, and after going to the Rijksmuseum, I was looking for the longest painting possible, and what came up was this painting of 30 Dutch soldiers from 1643. Each one of the soldiers stares at me at some point or another, but they're always good company. The painting also serves as a link between the dining area and the living area. This living area is defined by this sunburst pattern carpet by Bachmann Brown, and two squiggle chairs from Belgium in a similar green fabric to the dining chairs. Then this sofa from Dunbar is angled to look out to the view. I love this coffee table because it's clear, geometric, and it doesn't block anything. The surfboard light from the 50s is whimsical in shape and also was a visual link to the towers on the horizon. I love the terrace, I love spending time out there and enjoying my lavender and roses and pine tree. I feel like I'm in the countryside suspended above the city. I hope you enjoyed my apartment and seeing how design and architecture can work together to take a small space and make it feel expansive, modern, fresh and stylish. See you next time. Don't go anywhere, check out what's still to come. This perspective of the valley below is yours and yours alone. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Park City, Utah with architect and designer Michael Upwall to show off one of his favorite projects, dubbed Sunnyside North. Michael wanted this mountaintop home to feel like both an extension and a celebration of the landscape. Let's see how he did it. Hi, I'm Mike Upwall with Upwall Design Architects. Welcome to Sunny Ridge North. This modern home sits on the top of a mountain, featuring 360-degree views of the valleys below. As you drive up, you arrive at the auto courtyard, where you are embraced by the structure. The exterior is clad in metal panel siding of copper, brass, and bronze that will naturally patina over time. But it's freezing out here. Let's get inside and I'll show you around. Upon entering the great room, you're greeted with a two-story soaring space, which allows the space to maintain such a dynamic experience. At the base of the stone wall is this beautiful fireplace that provides warmth and ambience to you and your friends. But my favorite feature of this room is the two-story glass window that wraps around the view of the mountains outside, leaning out and also encouraging circulation into the next space of the house. This home is designed for entertaining, so the kitchen is a showpiece, it's the stage set. The rooms are designed to satellite off of the kitchen. And you can still have a visual and a connective experience to the dining room, the great room, and the hearth room, where you can kick back, relax, and watch your favorite show. The master bedroom is separated from the public space by this bridge. 
that designates the separation and a transition from public to private space. We're celebrating this experience by the window wall on the right that creates a rhythm that we move through. Not a long hallway, but a series of spaces, each one framing a unique view of the mountains. As you move into the master bedroom, you're greeted by this floor-to-ceiling window. Once you're in this space, you have complete privacy and everything you need, a fireplace, a TV, a sitting area to read and chill out. This perspective of the valley below is yours and yours alone. Thank you for joining me on this tour of Sunny Ridge North. I had an absolute blast showing around the house, but now I'm gonna go hit the slopes. I can't believe the show's already over. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe, because we're gonna keep giving you these amazing homes.